What's going on YouTube? I am B Dobbins, FTW, and I'll start with the obligatory. This is a beta, and my opinions may change if the full game is dramatically different, so take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt, I guess. But even referring to this as a beta is pretty generous. This is so obviously just the first Destiny continued. I don't know what kinks and bugs they could possibly still need to work out when they've had this shit up and running for three years now. And re-releasing the same game and calling it a sequel is Activision's bread and butter, obviously. I've already seen people comparing Destiny 2 to COD sequels. Uh, but honestly, that feels unfair to COD. This is a new level of copy and paste. Same graphics, art style, most of the enemies are identical to Destiny 1, the gameplay, the mechanics, even all the HUD icons are the same. The only real changes are to grenade and super cooldown times. whoop de fucking do To market this as a new game is disingenuous. You know, if, if you're someone who had gotten tired of Destiny 1, I doubt this new game is going to stay fresh long enough to justify the $60 you spend on it. Same shit, different digit. Which was very disappointing for me, because, you know, I thought Destiny 1 sucked and I was hoping for some dramatic improvements. I thought for sure some dramatic improvements would come along, but alas, it was not meant to be. Just as with the first game, we'll do the obligatory, it looks and sounds great. But I do have to say, 30 frames per second in 2017 is a huge fail, because once your eyes get used to 60 FPS on your screen, switching to 30 frames makes the 30 frames game feel broken. Like, I, it legit gives me motion sickness, and that's a huge problem considering nearly every other title out there is 60 frames per second these days. So, yeah, it's pretty when you're standing still, but once you start moving, it looks like somebody vomited colored chalk all over the screen. Playing through the beta story missions, I was struck by how little I felt watching the Traveler get butt-plugged. Maybe it's because that thing had always kind of creeped me out anyways. Somewhere along the line, my ghost attempted a pun. Oh, we're walking into the light. I think there's a metaphor here, and I don't like it. I think there's a metaphor here, and I don't like it. I cringed and died a little bit inside. The gameplay itself remains bland, it belongs in an arcade at the movie theaters. Not that there's anything wrong with arcade games, but there are some key differences in context. Arcade games cost 50 cents to play, depending on your skill level, 5 to 10 dollars to complete, and are meant to be played either by little kids or drunk. For a 60, and perhaps eventually 200 dollar game, the PvE combat falls woefully short for what should qualify as a AAA title in 2017. Just as with the first Destiny, the gameplay will never demand anything more intellectually taxing than your ability to point and shoot and hide behind something when the enemy shoots back. The enemy's projectiles and stats change, but the way you fight them never does. You can do it with a hand cannon or a scout rifle or an SMG and pretend that makes it different, but it doesn't. Every enemy is a bullet sponge, even when you land all crits. It's a stark contrast to Bungie's glory days during Halo when every enemy added something unique to the encounter. Whether it was baiting hunters to expose the weak points on their back, noob comboing ultra elites, dual wield plasma rifle, SMGs for the brute takedown, dodging brutes berserks, chaining flood kills with your sword, rockets at wraiths and banshees, flying your own banshee, driving your own tank, the good old days. If you've played Destiny 1, then you've already played the strike in this beta a few hundred times. There is nothing in style or substance that could possibly qualify this as new. The strike boss itself is literally a reskin of some shit from Destiny 1, and even if it wasn't the way it plays, it might as well be. It's a bullet sponge boss, and it shoots explosive projectiles at you, and if you get too close, it'll stomp on you. And in the meantime, it deploys smaller enemies to fuck with you. It's a boss fight formula pulled straight out of 1999. Ironic that a studio which developed such iconic boss fights in the past, whether it was a clone jetpack heretic elites, a prophet on its throne, the fucking scarab. Ironic they would put their name on such bland, unimaginative fights such as this. The PvE's greatest strength is that it will never ask you to think too much. I had to run through the strike a second time, despite how boring it was, simply because I couldn't even remember what had happened the first time, because I was paying so little attention. It's simple enough that your subconscious can handle it on its own, like washing your hair in the shower while you think about how shitty the rest of your day is going to be. But that is, of course, probably this game's greatest appeal. In a culture that still hates thinking for itself, but is getting bored with regular television, Destiny is the future. The multiplayer is the definition of nothing special. They've increased super and grenade cooldown times to the extent they might as well be taken out altogether. Typically, everyone gets to use their super once a match, usually towards the end and at the same time as everybody else. The matches are now capped at 4v4. The maps are as lifeless as before. Taken all together, it's essentially just a watered-down version of Destiny 1 multiplayer, which itself always felt like watered-down Halo. What's left is a skeleton of a game mode. The bare minimum to count is PvP. It's like Call of Duty but with longer kill times, no kill streaks, and at a clunky, awkward 30 frames per second. 
There were arena shooters released in the 90s that had more depth and dynamicy than this shit. At a time when we are seeing so many interesting innovations in online multiplayer from games like Rainbow Six Siege, Doom, Battlegrounds, and Overwatch, this just feels so outdated. That this will be considered top tier when it comes out is a disgrace to gaming and a slap in the face to hardworking developers everywhere. Perhaps when the full game releases, the story will be incredible. The progression system will somehow make the gameplay fun. Maybe they'll fill the PvP with vehicles and the PvE with interesting mechanics and sequences, but I'm not getting my hopes up this time. Because I've learned the hard way that what's in the beta is usually the best a game has to offer, not the worst. Destiny, to me, is like the keeping up with the Kardashians of gaming. It's this really gorgeous, hollow, pointless, crap entertainment that despite its complete lack of any substance, still retains this huge following. Just as with the Kardashians, the popularity of Destiny is a commentary on our culture. It bears discussion and warrants analysis, and that is why I will continue to cover this franchise to the bitter end, even if that means spending money on it. So let the dislikes flow, for this game's commercial success makes me more upset than anything I say will ever make Desticles. The For The Win query of the day is what do you think of the beta so far, based on your time playing it or what you've seen in the videos. Please remember to rate, this is Batman signing out.